And behind door number one, we have the For the Win 3 3090. And behind door number two, we have the the concoction, the the gong show, the shit mix, the the, the freak show. Hey guys, welcome to Frame Papers. I finished it. I got all the numbers done now. So I got um, all the updated 3080 numbers with the water block, with the extra 450 watt BIOS flash, and I got all the 4K ones. So, so when looking at these numbers, keep in mind the For the Win 3 is at 450 watts uh, limited from EVGA. And the shit show can pull up to 650 watts. Uh, go back to the video before this one at about the 10 minute mark if you want to see it live pulling 650 watts. It, it, was a, it was a good stream that one. But let's see if a 650 watt 3080 can catch up to a 3090. Yeah, let, let's just, you know what, let's just go right into it, just because I know people keep bitching about timestamps and shit, and I, I, I rant on too long, so here are the benchmarks. Those are the numbers. Pretty sweet, huh? It's, uh, it's kissing it. It's, it's, okay. You know what you can do? Because the, the problem is my For the Win 3 is a 450 watt model, my 3090. So it's like the expensive one, right? But if you actually go online and look at 350 watt 3090 numbers, like uh, Founders Edition or a Zotac one, or, you know, like the base model ones, uh, the, the two pin ones, like, like the Strix, you'll find that my 3080 is matching all of those numbers. So like, uh, my 650 watt 3080 is the same as a 350 watt 3090. Yeah. But on average, adding the water block and flashing that BIOS on top of the shunt added on average 6% performance increase. Um, and which, and then on average, that was 6% 6 behind the 3090. So out of all those benchmarks, I can't, I can't push the card anymore, essentially, but it's 6% it's six behind a 450 watt 3090. So you might be asking, what does this all mean? I don't know, man, this is uh it means whatever you want it to mean. Okay, what it actually means in all seriousness, uh, let me increase the font here. You can buy a 3080, RTX 3080 for $800, let's say, right? For like an XE3 model. Even better if you can find a uh, Gaming X Trio one because that one's got uh, three A pins, but let's just say $800. You get the Alpha Cool water block for $150. Yeah. 
you add some five cent resistors, you add a BIOS flash, you get a 650 watt 3080 that is on par with a 3090. The 3090 costs $1,500 for a base model one. So, 3080, $950 gets you the performance of a $1,500 3090. Now, we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna ignore the fact that this does not include the cost of the water cooling stuff and um, nuclear reactor to, to power the thing, right? I needed to have, I needed a 1,500 watt power supply to power this thing properly, but Ooh, there you go. That, that that's exactly what it means. This is this is a thirty eighty for nine hundred and fifty dollars with a water block is the ultimate value compared to this. If you're willing to shunt mod it, or yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope that made sense. You can get like ultimate four K performance for the cost of your electricity bill. That. But that would still probably be worth it because you're not going to spend $600 in electricity over the lifespan of the card, right? That's really interesting. Another thing to also note though, the numbers for the water block are only 6% higher than the air cooler, but you have to keep in mind that the air cooler is 100% fan speed running at like 85C during those benchmarks. And the water block has it running at 40. So for the for the sake of the longevity of your of your video card, like the lifespan of it, you don't want to shunt mod on the air cooler. 85C is way too damn hot. You need the water block for it. Also, the other thing that didn't make sense was why the 3080 scored higher than the 3090 in the 4K Strange Brigade test. I tested that shit three times on both cards. It was accurate. Uh, I don't know why the 4K one scaled more with the clock speed than the 1080p one. I have no idea, but it won in one case, man. It That that 650 watts won in one of the cases. Won, Juan, it, Juan, Juan in one of the cases. Again, take what you want from the information. $950, column A, 3090 performance, column B, 3090 for the same performance for $1,500. The question you gotta kind of ask yourself is are you okay running your card with that much power through it for a long period of time? Second question is can you get a power supply and a water cooling loop for the price of that 3090? Right? And then do you just water cool your CPU at the same time? Like, like, like you can take the savings saved from the 3090 and build an entire water loop for that money which would increase the performance of your whole computer essentially right we have a special guest appearance say hi hi my kitty mm. say hi say hi mm. <laughs> look at the camera look at the camera oh she's so pretty look how pretty my kitty is growling with her eyes closed but I'm, i must say though that once you go water cooling you cannot go back i'm i'm trying to like get water blocks for my for the wind 3090 and it's killing me that that is still on air because like look the 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 uh the the core clock on my 3090 can only go up to like 1900 tops on the air cooler right if i shunt modded that thing uh water cooled that thing Dude, that thing could scale like 30% faster than, than what these numbers are. Like, like, like that thing, yeah, like just wait till I get a water block for the 3090 and I like, we are going for a kilowatt with that one. I'm gonna go, I'm going to go for 1000 watts of power draw into that card. Mark, like, mark my words. Anyway, that's pretty much it, I think. There's not much to talk about the... The numbers speak for themselves, and if you're interested more in detail of what was going on, check the video before this, that, that one hour long stream. There's a lot of details in there, but like, 
This video is benchmarks, 650 watts, 450 watts, price of one, price of another one, and you can make whatever decisions you want at the end of the day, right? And that's what we're here for at the end of the day. How do you take your product that you bought and get the most performance out of it that you can? And there's more to come with liquid metal and soldering capacitors later. Anyway, guys, hope you liked the content. If you did, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff for me. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Emphasis on the subscribe. Hope you guys learned something. Uh, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later.